hello everyone uh, in this video we'll try to find dft of find dft of a rectangular pulse or pulse okay and what is the output we have to get so we are expecting a sync function we are expecting a sync function the way we did uh, in the previous video where we have taken dft of a <coughs> sync function and we ended up with a rectangular pulse now uh, in time domain, if I take a rectangular pulse in frequency domain, it should be a sync function. Okay. Now we'll try to write uh, a code, Scilab code, uh, to generate a rectangular pulse first. Later on, we'll take its DFT. So CLC clear, close. I am defining uh, the sample index, which is varying from minus 10 to uh, 10 in a steps of 0.1. Okay. So it starts from minus 10 and ends at 10 in a steps of 0.1. Uh, the width of the rectangular pulse, I'll put it in the variable a and I'll call it as 1. Okay. So this a is the width of the rectangular pulse. For i, varying from 1 to length of n, if n of i if n of i is greater than or equal to minus a and n of i is less than or equal to a uh, a uh, basically this is not minus 1 this is a because so here what I am doing here is I am defining the width so if n of i if I am searching for n for a value of minus a okay so what is the value of a here 1 so from minus 1 to 1 from minus 1 to 1 so if I get the value of n for which it is varying from minus 1 to 1 so what I will do the x which is variable which I am saving the rectangular pulse I will make it as 1 okay so else else x of i is equal to 0 Now we will look at the signal, I will put it in figure 1, plot 2d3 since it is a discrete time, I mean we are taking DFT, I have to take its samples, so plot 2d of n, comma x. First we will see, uh, where we shall look at the rectangular pulse first, we will see DFT, DFT underscore RECT underscore pulse. No, I, might, I have an error, so it is saying that unex, unexpected end of file expecting end. So I think I have to put one more end here. So for if statement end. Okay. Fine. So this is our rectangular pulse. So since a I defined one, so from minus one to one, so I have one everywhere. Okay. So this a will change the width of the rectangular pulse. If I make it as 2, so this will be uh, 1 for n varying from minus 2 to 2. So total width is 4. Fine. So this a parameter will change the width of the rectangular pulse. The way we uh, made it as s in sync function, here I kept it in a. So let me give the title for this. Title. What is the command? Title. Title. So what is the title? It's a rectangular pulse. X label. So it is in time domain. So it is n. Y label. So it is frequency domain. Sorry, uh, this is x of n, right? So it is in time domain. It's a function of n. Now we'll take DFT cap capital X is equal to FFT of small letter x. So x of k. Capital X stand for X of K is equal to F of T of small letter X, which is X of N. Now I will take its magnitude, X underscore mag is equal to absolute value of X of K. Okay. Now I will make it in, uh, let me plot it. So let me make it in subplot, subplot, two rows, one column. In that first figure, I plotted rectangular pulse. Now subplot, two rows, 
one column in the second figure I am plotting DFT of rectangular plots. So plot 2D3 3 of now since n is also varying from 0 to n minus 1, k is also varying from 0 to n minus 1. I will make it as k is equal to n. Here I will plot it with respect to k. So k comma what x underscore x underscore mag. Let me just check uh, the output. Okay. So because of the symmetry property, so uh, this value got splitted and I have come uh, the other value is here. So we have to combine these two. To combine these two, what is the command we have to use? It is FFT shift, right? FFT shift of x mag. This is to combine those complex conjugate values. Okay, so this is a sync function. So DFT of a rectangular pulse is the sync function. Let me give the title. Title. So it is DFT of DFT of rectangular pulse. X label. So X label is K and Y label is magnitude of X of K. Now, so the way we change the width of the sync function uh, in in the previous program. Uh, what was happening? Uh, the rectangular pulse width was changing. So same concept holds good here also. If this width decreases, sync function width will increase. If this will width is increasing, sync function width will decrease. Okay. So we'll see that. So I have given a as two. If I give a as one, in the sense, if I decrease the width, sync function width should increase. See the sync function width got increased, right? Now if I give a as 0.5, if I give a as 0.5, so width of the sync function has to increase. So it's, it's happened. So this is the DFT of a rectangular pulse.